This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Gemma Lucy. Gemma, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. First and mm-hmm. foremost, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. You've done reality shows, you're doing OnlyFans. But I'm a mad bastard back in the day, if I'm honest. <laughs> so it'll be good to see who you're, you really are when we strip back all the bullshit. And, and get why to I'm know, so mad. <laughs> uh, and get to know the real person. Yeah. But first and foremost, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, really good. I've not really seen you do many podcasts or interviews where it's in depth about your own life yeah how so very selective yeah, well you <laughs> oh, picked the best yeah, thank exactly. you. but yeah. before we get into all the madness i always like to go back to the start of my guests mm-hmm. get a bit of understanding about you where sure. you grew up and how it all began yeah so i was born in singapore actually um my parents got married there um i grew up i went to school there till i was about 12 years old and then my parents sent me to actually when i was 11 years old my parents sent me to a really kind of small posh English boarding school um, where I experienced a lot of kind of behavioral problems due to like my upbringing and stuff. Um, I got expelled from like five different schools. I got sent away to America on a show called Brat Camp. Um, So yeah, this is just like in in a quick sort of way. And then because of that, I kind of went off the rails because I was sent there based on complete lies. I was tricked. I was being treated like somebody who the way I felt didn't matter. And the behavioral issues that I was having before I got sent there, I was just told constantly I was just some naughty girl constantly. And yeah, so that affected my life. And then after that, I kind of got into modeling. um, And then I got quite badly into drugs as well as a way to sort of manage what I'd been through. And then... I kind of sorted things out, did OnlyFans. Obviously, that's a big earner for me, and I'm a very strong kind of businesswoman. Obviously, I did a lot of TV shows as well. And then, yeah, I kind of stopped the whole bad road that I was on. About eight years ago, I stopped taking drugs through my own kind of determination, and I got addicted to going to the gym instead. Um, And, yeah, here I am now. How was your mum and dad? How? What do you mean? How were they as parents? Um, Awful. And what were you? So my parents are very, they're very traditional in terms of like education. They just wanted me to go to this really posh English boarding school. Um, But as I was a child growing up, I was never heard, never listened to. I was always told that I was a problem and I always felt like I was a problem. And that as soon as I became this problem, I just was shipped away constantly. Um, And to this day, I don't speak to my mum. She has nothing to do with me or my daughter um yeah like they're just very emotionally unavailable and just really bad parents to be honest with you a lot of abandonment issues loads of abandonment issues I think that's a lot of the reasons why I've been attracted to like the wrong men and probably a reason why I've been down this road of like you know just acting wild on tv even OnlyFans is probably something to do with that too um and as a very as from a very young age I noticed that I was very sexual like in my mind but 
I didn't know that when I was little. I didn't think that there was anything wrong with that. Um, but now looking back, I'm kind of like, why was I doing stuff like that or thinking stuff like that? Like when I was at school, like to age 12, I was like just doing the weirdest stuff. Like, you know, back then when there were no phones, I was like, I remember buying a, a disposable camera from a shop and just taking pictures of myself in my underwear. And I'd print them out and I would send them to like boys that I was talking to from other schools. But I didn't really know what I was doing. I just thought that's how I was to get love and attention because I was so unhappy and no one cared and no one was listening. And then I kept getting kicked out of all these schools. And instead of my parents just like taking me in and looking after me, they just sent me to another one just constantly. And all these times I kept getting kicked out and told off instead of someone just sitting me down being like, are you okay? Like, what's up? I was just getting told you're so naughty, go to this school, go to that school. And then I ended up at one where only naughty kids go to. So that's even worse. I'm just surrounded by loads of naughty kids. And like a prison? Yeah. And that's when I started to take drugs. At what age? 15. What age did you lose your virginity? I think 15 as well, the start of 15. Yeah, I was 30. I think boys were kind of younger, but it's yeah. like a... When it's like a, the being a naughty kid, it's like a scream for attention. Yeah. It's like you want people to listen. It's like people who self-harm sometimes, it's more for a scream exactly. for attention. Yeah. Did well, you go down that route of... Yeah, kinda... I mean, so... I've never spoke about it, but yeah, I have, I've took, I took two overdoses when I was little. Um, well, not that little, like 18 and 20. Um, both times I was just crying for help. I did, I did take a pretty serious overdose though. I went to about three different shops and I bought about, I think I took 80 Nurofen tablets. So it's quite a lot. And I remember I did it and then I went straight to the hospital. So I obviously knew that I was kind of trying to get attention or someone to listen to me. And then I told my mum that I did it. I wrote her a long email saying that I'd just done this and I feel really shit and I just got ignored. So yeah, that kind of made me even more wild. Everything I did, I was getting ignored. Like even though I could have potentially died, I was still not getting listened to. So from a young age, I just had no guidance either. So all the decisions that I was making from like age 12 or 11 onwards from when I got sent to England on my own, they were just me just trying to make decisions as a child that an adult makes. So I had no one to kind of like guide me, but yet all the decisions I was making, I was getting told off for and scrutinized for. And I just felt like I can't do anything right. So how else can I get someone to love me or get attention? And it was always through trying to seek attention through men or my body. Yeah. Even though, yeah, being so young, I didn't really know, like age 12, when I was taking these pictures, obviously I felt sexy, but I'm 12, like I've barely developed, so. Yeah, yeah. it's sad, my daughter's 15 <clears throat> and I try and guide her as much as possible. I know what men are like, I was a fucking pervert myself, majority <laughs> of men are, for all honest about yeah. it. So it's just, we live in a society where there's so many broken homes. I don't yeah. know, if there's no manual for men as well, how to really to be a good parent. I've only just, I never learned it till, my kids were seven, eight, nine. I just, you kind yeah. of wing it as a father. And yeah, but I think it's about being present, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And listening to your children. Because I've got a four-year-old and, you know, every day I'm like, am I doing it right? Or am I being a bad mom? Even earlier, she was having a tantrum. And I just wanted to make sure that I, I'm just listening to her at, at the very least. So, yeah, there isn't a guide. But I think being present is the most important thing. Were you speaking the language over there? In Singapore? Yeah. I tried to learn it, but... I just couldn't get the hang of it. I learned Mandarin. I can probably count to 10. I'm not going to do it now. But yeah, that's about it. What sort of bullying did you have to go through? Bullying. Was it teasing, name calling, or were you getting beaten up? Um, I did get beaten up once, actually. Um, but yeah, a lot of name calling. Um, teasing. Yeah. I, I can't remember the bullying as much as just the other stuff that was going on. I was just constantly distracted by trying to get attention somehow. Did you feel lonely? Very. A lot of rejection. Very rejected, yeah. Like, I still feel like it now. Like, I'm not good enough for my family. So, yeah. It's mad, though, the trauma of the past and the scars. It still haunts us. Mm -hmm. No matter how much we change and try to work on myself. Yeah. The darkness always appears somewhere. If exactly, even if, yeah. Even if I'm happy, it's like somebody says, you shouldn't be happy, that kid. Mm. Negative thoughts kick in. It can ruin your whole fucking day. Of course it can, exactly. And, like, there's things that I think that, Parents don't realise that things can happen when you're younger. 
you might be fine after it or years after, but then you can experience trauma because at the time you don't realize how bad things were. So I've got a specific memory that I thought of the other day when I thought of coming on here and what I wanted to share. And I had an experience with a guy, one of my brother's friends, who actually tried to fill me up when I was asleep. And um, they went on a night out, got back. I was staying at my brother's house and the guy... My brother thought the guy was going to sleep in a different room, but he came into the room I was in. I was age 14 and he got in the bed. And like now if someone did that to me, I'd go get a knife. But obviously I was 14. I was terrified. And the guy was like feeling up my body, trying to pull my knickers down, like licking my legs and kissing me. It was horrible. I was trying to wring my sister under the, my pillow. And then the next morning I told everyone what had happened and no one believed me. And even my mum was like, are you sure this happened? Because you know how damaging this is if you're lying, Gemma. And to this day, I basically felt like my experience was a burden on their life. And like the fact that I shared what had happened to me was a problem because I don't know. I don't even know how it's a problem because they stayed friends with the people. Um, and it's weird because I, I kind of forgot about that whole experience for a while because it's almost like I wasn't allowed to feel how I felt, but I thought about it again a few years ago and realized how traumatic it was. I, I even made friends with the guy again because I felt like I had to through my family and stuff. Um, but I think when you're treated like that by family members, it just it just makes you feel like, what what's going on if the only people around you that you're supposed to be able to trust 100%, you can't even trust them? Yeah, because you doubt yourself for everything. and. Mm. That guy's a fucking pedophile. Exactly. This is the thing. Like when I when I when it happened, I just thought, oh, that's disgusting. But looking back now, I'm like, no, that's a pedophile. Yeah. And I was made to believe that I shouldn't speak up about it or that I might be lying or you know, and I even second guessed myself, like, did that really happen? But I know it happened. Yeah, but that's what happens and that's abuse of parents as well. Yeah. Not mentally, spiritually, so many different levels of no day because you're the naughty girl in school. You've probably said things before and nobody's believed you. And yeah. then with the extreme things, like you say, it's probably a cry out for help and try to take more yeah. life. Your mum probably thought you were just pretending, not exactly. realising it was the fucking truth and you're crying how, out for a mother. How can you take the risk to not believe your child of something so serious like that? What's your mum and dad's upbringing? Did you ever, did, um, did you ever know it? Very posh and traditional and very like emotionally unavailable, kind of just... You go to school at this age and you get the grades and you have to go to uni, then you get the job and just, you know, kind of like, what's the word? Matrix or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So so what happens then <clears throat> when you feel that abandonment issues kick in, the rejection, the suicidal thoughts, being abused? Mm. Did your life really slip off path well, then? Yeah, so that's where I started to take drugs and I literally took every possible drug you can ever imagine all the time I was just fucked all the time and I had a good time but the come downs got so bad and I got so depressed and I had to change it around but it wasn't till I got sober that I realized what I was doing I was actually masking what, what had happened to me you know there's so many little stories I could tell you but all of those things I was just blocking them out and yeah putting them to a side by just getting fucked off my face but my mum obviously just was like naughty girl you know if if my daughter was to start taking drugs I would be so upset and wonder why she wants to and really like get her help in terms of like trying to work it out whereas I was just naughty taking drugs like when you take drugs heavily you're obviously covering shit up it's yeah, not you're in pain yeah you're so in pain exactly. the, the mask it's just a big plaster to pretend mm. that you're finding drugs as well Listen, it probably served me for, for many years because I was so broken. Yeah. And it gave me confidence to pretend I was somebody that I wasn't. Exactly. Once you grow strength and learn how to say no, you become a whole different animal. Yeah. But it's so sad because so many people don't get out. I've no. been blessed to go, fuck this life. I, mm. I don't want, I was a failure and a loser for years. A, pre mm. a pretender, craving fame, craving attention because I thought that would heal the pieces. I thought that would... Mm -hmm. That would heal me. That's the, all the pieces are broken, but that's the, what I need. Mm. And then you realise how fucked up that is. And then you start it's actually crazy. getting some, you realise you become more of a recluse because yeah. you realise how fake the world can be. 
But if you're a parent, you've got to take the reins. You've got to lead by example. Yeah. Now you talk about your kid not wanting drugs and drink, but yeah. they will see your past as well, the yeah. shit that you've done, and that can also be a blockage in your own mind because you, you've made changes, you're looking great, you've lost a lot of weight, you've got a sparkle in your eye, so you're clearly doing something right mm -hmm. but in your mind because we're all soft cunts, no matter how tough we think we are, yeah. the loudest cunt's always the weakest. We know always. this now. Yeah, but yeah. When you start, because we are soft, we start thinking of the regret mm -hmm. because every, our actions becomes a reaction to our kids. Our kids have become a reflection of us. And exactly, do you ever yeah. worry that your kid would follow your footsteps at the things you've done from a teenager? Absolutely. Like it, it worries me every day what my daughter's going to kind of get up to when she's older and stuff. But all I can do is just be as present as I can for her. And I believe why I got, you know, into drugs and went down those bad roads. And I just believe it's because I was abandoned and rejected and nobody listened to me. And I was just basically like, if you don't want to listen to me, let's watch what I'm going to do. Kind of. I didn't know I was doing that, but looking back, that's what I was doing. So yeah, I just never want my daughter to feel any of those things. And I know that, you know, it's kind of natural for teenagers to want to experience maybe drugs or alcohol, but obviously alcohol. And yeah, again, I want to be as understanding as possible with her because I was always f uh, made to feel like if I wanted to try a drink, like all my friends were, I was so naughty. I was in the wrong, but I was 14, 15 years old. That's what kids do. And I just want you know, to be on my daughter's side with it all and try and monitor it. And it completely worries me. But all I want to do is just be a much better parent to her than what I had. That's all you can do is lead by example. Mm. Your kids are a reflection of you. My daughter is in private school and I try and give her the best opportunities that I never yeah. had. But again, just because you go to private school, back in the day, there's more coke kids in fucking private school than there is because life yeah. is too easy for them. Exactly. They're not feeling the struggle. Yeah. So they think everything becomes easy and that can be damaging. So I need to be careful. Mm -hmm. I always thought I'd be the big fun dad, love a laugh and yeah. shit. But I'm strict as fuck. I'm scared who's there, what our teachers are like, all the oh male. My God, because I'm thinking, because oh, I've interviewed enough fucking people to know how wicked the world is. Mm. So I question men, why the fuck you want to be a teacher? And there's yeah. probably genuine people out there who genuinely do it for the heart. But I think no, it's I'm just the there's so same. many groomers and scouts and football teams and teachers. And I look at them and there's always a vibe. Yeah. And I think ah, there's something not fucking right about you. I'm the exact same. All the My daughter's been to a couple of nurseries and I will only put her in a nursery where it's all females. Obviously, I think when they get older, that's hard to avoid male teachers. But I, I feel like it scares me. Yeah. everything like even things like when she's older when she wants to go and see her friends that like even their parents like I'm not I'm, I'm not comfortable with it that worries me more than anything because all these stories that come out when people are older such as me and I saw you did Emily Black's her story and stuff these things go on and sometimes the parents don't even realize what's going on so that's why I just feel like I don't know, I'm going to be a mess when she starts wanting to go to her friend's yeah. houses and things. You just need to be strict because groomers, they don't start on the kids, they start on the parents. The weak links, there was an interview, a guy interviewed a sex case and he says, if the father's big and strong or whatever, and they're intimidating, they're not going near the kids. So not just target the kids, but we'll target the parents first, the weak links, the vulnerability. I had a guy, Andy Woodward on, his mum and dad used to let him stay with the coach who was abusing him for fucking years, six years I went oh on. Oh my God. So it's the mental scarring. And yeah. that's what you need to be careful of. You, you can never be too protective. I don't that's give a fuck. Thing. So. That's the thing. I'm so protective to the point where I don't want to like give her any anxiety or or whatever. But I just feel like, I don't know how I'm going to cope with that. I, yeah. I'm way too protective. I don't, I don't really like people. I just feel like I don't. I trust a small amount of people and, and that's about it. What was the first reality show you done? Mm, I did one with Katie Price years ago, but that was shit. What was that? <laughs> Signed by Katie Price. It was just some show. I used to be a quite a big fan of her. Um, she was beautiful back in the day, stunning. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. beautiful. That's what fame does to you. It fucks with me. Yeah, exactly. And I used to, I used to like kind of live with her. Um, I spent a lot of time with her, and the person that she showed me that she was, yeah, didn't like it at all. So I kind of lost being a fan of her but yeah that that show was more kind of like I tried to go on Big Brother years ago and I didn't get on so I went on there but then the first sort of big show I did was X on the Beach and that's where everything kind of took off from and what was that like when you started getting that attention that you've never had before um I liked it and it gets addictive 
as I'm sure you know. Yeah, social media. Yeah. Like, I'm addicted to my phone. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm a gratification. Tell me how good I'm doing. Tell me my podcast. Yeah, are great. how many likes? All yeah. of this. Yeah, if my views go down a couple of weeks. I think I'm, everybody hates <laughs> gonna me. Going to go broke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, everybody hates me, and that's a horrible yeah. place to be. Yeah, because I'm not showing gratitude to what I'm actually achieving. My kids yeah. are healthy. I'm already winning. Yeah, it's always the element I greed. No it's matter horrible. how much you work on myself and it's poisonous. Yeah, it's horrible how just phones and technology, you're just glued to your phone the whole time. And it, yeah, like you said, it's looking for validation and things like that. And I think that, you know, the generation of kids now, as they grow up, it's going to be even worse mm -hmm. because they're growing up with it. At least when we grew up, we didn't have that when we were young. But um, yeah, I mean, when I first did X on the Beach, the followers started to go up, the likes, the money, everything went up. And I did like it a lot because... As well, I was so vulnerable and naive as well because I was about 23 or something and I'd still had this rocky upbringing where I, a part of me is still a, a little girl, I feel like, because I've never had the mothering that I needed or the fathering that I needed or just in general, the guidance. So even to this day, I feel like that. But when I did X on the Beach, I did it twice. Um, they take advantage of your vulnerability. Like they make you do stuff without literally forcing you physically with words, they'll manipulate you. And I regret everything I did on those shows. I hate them. I, I just look like a twat. But I mean, that's how I got to where I am now. So I can't really slate it too much. But there were times where they would drag me off set, like by my clothes and be like, if you want to be famous, if you want to make it, you need to start doing stuff or you're going home tomorrow. Go and get in that room and sleep with him and blah, blah, blah. They did it to me so many times. And I listened to them because I wanted it so much. I wanted, I wanted to be so financially secure that's been the main drive for me is money i'm so money driven um obviously i love the fame and and that kind of side of it too but the end goal for me was the money because the fame and the followers equals money um so i wanted it that much and they could see so they would just push me into situations that i was just acting like an absolute knob um, it was all acting though people would think that's really me it's not yeah, but this is why people will see you for who you are today. Mm. No bullshit. No loud and shouting and fighting yeah. and arguing because it's all drama. Drama sells. Yeah. What gets these TV shows so popular is the fighting and the arguing. Yeah. You were perfect for that. Yeah, exactly. But then it's I would still, do anything it's still said. grooming, but they, they, they know your, their targets as well. Yeah. They, they're selling, you're basically selling your soul. Exactly. You're selling your soul. And now, because of the way TV is, it's there for life. But actually, I've just thought that wasn't the first show I went on. It was Brat Camp was the first show I went on. How old were you? 15 so what made you who, who, whose idea was to go on that it was my parents i got lied to so basically was paris hilton on who, who? yeah so paris hilton wasn't on my one but she went to the same place as me i don't know if you've seen her documentary but she got sent to three camps in america that are like behavioral camps and um, one of them was the one that i went to um, she managed to escape from it. I don't know how, because <laughs> the camp was, it, you're literally in a little tiny um, campsite that's 300 miles away from any sort of place where you could get anything, um, apart from like a few shops down the road and there's mountain lions and stuff. So you're literally in the middle of the desert. But um, yeah, so when I was 15, I kind of was at this bad school and I started to take drugs. I was taking a bit of ecstasy, but it was very like now and then it wasn't mm -hmm. like hardcore, like I got later on um and I think my parents must have just guessed I was taking drugs because they were nowhere to be seen they were in Singapore um and out of the blue they decided this was a good idea um didn't tell me this was a good idea didn't tell me this was the idea though but when they presented it to me they said to me that because again they knew I wanted to be famous and wanted to go on tv and stuff like this so they told me, do I, do I want to go on a TV show in America where I'm just going to go partying and shopping and skiing, horse riding, just all these things that I love. They're telling me I'm going to go and do something like The Hills. Do you know what I mean? Like that type of show. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to go to LA and be a star. So I was like, yeah, 100%. And I went to Channel 4 to do all the interviews and they kept interviewing me and my parents separately. And when they interviewed me, they were like, oh yeah, we just don't want them to hear about the stuff we're going to tell you because we're going to do loads of cool stuff with you they won't like they're kind of just manipulating me and I was like oh yeah sick I'm gonna do all this stuff and yeah anyway they presented a contract to me so my parents had this contract that I had to sign and I was literally late for a rave and my parents just before I went out the door they're like oh just quickly sign this before you go because you know it's just so you can be filmed and obviously I'm 15 years old I've got a contract in front of me like this I'm about to get fucked at a party I don't care what's in there I'll just quickly sign it 
But little did I know I was signing my life away. So I went to the airport a few weeks later, got on the plane, got off the plane. Um, and as soon as I got off the plane and walked into the airport in Salt Lake City in America, out of nowhere, about 10 cowboys with like handcuffs, guns, just surrounded me and these other five people who were also being sent there. And they just said, from now on, you're not having any of your stuff, your phones, your clothes, nothing. You're not allowed to speak. It's done for you lot for three months from now on. They took all of our stuff, chucked us in a car. I was completely beside myself and and I was being filmed as well. This whole thing was filmed. I was just humiliated. Um, got taken to this camp and the first part of the camp, you have to sit outside in a stone circle in the desert and you just ha you have to sit upright and you're just facing someone who's like some sort of army police officer guy and you're just not allowed to move unless you want to go to the toilet. You get given a bit of pasta that you can make on a fire, no sauce, nothing. You sleep on the floor. And it was like that for about a week and a half. Um, and their kind of sort of strategy was to strip you of your personality, any privileges that you have, but they're not privileges, they're just normal things that you should have, like your own clothes or a pillow or a mattress to sleep on. But they had this strategy where they just take everything from you. And if you want it back, you have to earn it. If, if you don't want to earn it back, you don't get it. It's as simple as that. And I just remember writing letters to my parents, just begging them to take me out of there. I was just getting ignored, 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 ignored. So I just thought, the only way I can get out of here is if I just do what they say. So I did. Again, the place was very brutal, you know, a lot of shouting, a lot of physical grabbing, shoving, pushing, like the staff members. Um, we weren't allowed to talk to each other. The kids weren't allowed to talk to each other. Um, it was very lonely, horrible. Um, so anyway, I completed that um, three months later. I left the camp, went to visit my parents in LA who were then going to take me back to Singapore, which again was a lie because I was told I was going back to England where all my friends were, where they put me originally. Um, I got out of the camp for one day and I had a huge argument with my mum because I was lied to. I was like, you not fucking lied to me and sent me to this camp and you want me to now be reformed? No, thanks. Fuck you, basically. And then I went to the computer room in this hotel and I was just sat there on MSN catching up with everyone. And I just heard the door burst open behind me. And these two massive men, bearing in mind I'm 15, these two men that my parents didn't even know who they rang up to take me back. So they just gripped me up, chucked me in the car. This was on like Christmas Eve, something, something around Christmas time. I was there for Christmas. And I was just like, fuck. All I thought was, why didn't I wait till I got back to England? Because this won't happen if I'm in England, because it's not, it's not legal here. Um, so yeah, I got sent back for that time. It was for a month. And yeah, like the, the whole process just made me think I can't fucking trust anyone. For some reason, they think that I'm going to sit there and go, oh, I, I need to be good now. No, I'm thinking, fuck all you lot. You think you can just lie to me and just chuck me in a car and chuck me in a camp. But you don't even want to look after me yourself. So yeah, I left there after a month. That sounds a bit extreme. Did anybody ever benefit from that? No. Or did everybody end up worse? Um, oh, you mean the other kids? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Were you ever in contact with any of them? Um, I used to. Some of them ended up worse. I definitely did. <laughs> I took way more drugs than I've ever took. <laughs> what a show. Literally. Yeah. I know. And um, yeah, I just feel like the whole strategy was just fucked up. All you were needing was love. Yeah. And you know when I'm I asked... you. Exactly. And when I ask my parents now, why did you send me there? My Both of my parents just say... We had to, because otherwise you were going to die. And I was like, are you listening to yourself? You were saying, I'm going to, if I don't go there, I'm going to die. But where were you? If you think your own child's going to die, you're still fucking around in Singapore whilst I'm fucking around in England. And you don't want to come and help me if you really think I'm going to die. But it's not that. It's your problem. Go. Did you uh, ever get therapy? Yeah, I still have therapy. I've had every kind of therapy possible. I have therapy every week. I have hypnotherapy sometimes. I've had loads of therapy. Um, I've actually got trauma from that so bad that I find it difficult to travel because airports give me really bad anxiety. Um, and I have anxiety about, you know, sometimes in the middle of the night, I can't sleep because I think someone's going to come and take me or take my daughter. And it's a real problem that I have like every night. I would probably think about it at least once. Some nights I can't sleep because of it. Some nights I'm all right, but 
I'm so funny with safety, like the locks on my doors, cameras, everything, because I just feel like I'm not safe. Have you ever been robbed? Once, but it, it wasn't that bad. I wasn't in and it was, yeah, they saw me coming to the house and they dropped all my stuff outside. I think it was some, one of my friends said it up was bad, but you would have thought I had the way that I keep my house safe. But remember you were abused at 14. Mm. So you're going to have that trauma and pain, but it's because we, 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 as yeah. humans we're very good at blocking things out. Yeah, we block everything out, and you don't even realise you're doing yeah, it sometimes. But it always comes to the surface, no matter how strong you think you are, no matter how much you exercise or whatever you do. Mm. And let you can only heal it when you face it. Yeah, and be exactly. honest about it, and go. Do you know what? I fucked up there. I, I've been through some shit. Yeah, and we actually. This is why these podcasts are so good because these are therapy sessions. Absolutely, yeah, and it's just people get an understanding of you do you know what mm -hmm. she's actually sound at and mm. then people come forward gives other people strength yeah because so many people go through it and a lot of men are going through the same shit as well yeah. like, well, the thing about men we don't we can't speak about it that's the thing get I on know. fucking shut up and I understand because I always say this but the saying it's okay not to be okay I get it but it's not okay to live there yeah you've got to fucking fight back you've got to push through Absolutely. the pain the storm to try and have a better day mm. and I think Maybe we'll chill out in our 60s, hopefully. But right now, it's just all hustle because we've got pressure on us to survive, to be better Absolutely, parents. Absolutely, yeah. It's just constant pressure, especially in this day and age. Nobody really knows what the fuck is going on. No matter <laughs> That's how much what I mean. we think we know what we're talking about, we all talk a lot of shite. Yeah, no we, matter how old you are, who, who really knows what's going on? We're yeah. just, like, winging it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So see, when you're going through all that then, you end up in X in the beach. What was the fame like for you? Was it an enjoyment? Um, because you seem yeah. to enjoy it when you seem to embrace it. I really embraced it and I was really good at it. Like I was really good at like making sure I was in the paper every day, getting the press, not giving a fuck as well. I would just, the paps would be like, do this, do that. I'll just do anything just to get the, the headline. Um, which was good for me then because I wanted what I wanted then, but what I want now is totally different. I want more stability and, I want press in the right way if I'm going to get press, but I like to be a lot more low key now anyway, because I like to protect my daughter and peace. peace. Yeah. Has it all come down to Do you feel like you were used a lot? But you were, listen, you were gaining and they were gaining. So you're, you're using them just as much as you, because you thought that was the right thing at that time for your life. Mm. So it kind of served you, but do you look back and you, you get embarrassed and feel you cringe? Absolutely. I cringe so much. Like, I think I'm the worst one, but I'm sure I'm not. But I think it, I literally was like, I remember thinking when I went on that, the second X on the beach, they literally sat me down and were like, the first one, you didn't do enough. This one, you need to do this, this and this. Otherwise you're gone. So I was like, right, I'm just fucking doing everything. I'm drinking everything. I'm yeah, doing everything, fighting with everyone. How much did you get paid? I can't remember. Not a lot, like 150 a day. It's fucking terrible. Isn't yeah, it? it's terrible. The only good thing is I got Celebrity Big Brother after that, which is you done well in that. Yeah, you, done well. you got to the final. Huh? Yeah, I got to the final. That's probably my least cringiest show, but I still cringe. Who was the wee guy who was a pain in the ass that was always shouting? Paul Dunan. Yeah, <laughs> so jarring. He was just like, what was my experience of him? I think he had a lot of issues himself, and he was kind of like deflecting a lot. Where I've had so much therapy, I can kind of clock these type of behaviours too. Like a lot of, I think it's it can be a male trait to be a bit more in denial. Not all men, but yeah, he was a bit in denial. And I think that he was just pushing his issues onto me. But I knew he was doing that. So I was just winding him up on purpose. Mm -hmm. What happened after Big Brother? Um, after Big Brother, I did quite a few. I did a show called oh, Celebrity Stylist or something where they made me over and stuff, which... I didn't really like, but I did a lot more kind of magazine deals and stuff. And then I focused on my OnlyFans. But you were a glamour I... model as well. Yeah, I did glamour back in the day when what there was Nuts Zoo. I mean, I'm pretty sure I was in there when I was 16, but they didn't know that. I just That's heavy, but on it. Yeah, but back then they just ask you how old you are and you tell them, and then they don't they don't check. But mm. now ID is like a thing. But yeah, back in the day of Nuts and Zoo, The Sun, I used to do all of that. Um, and then after Big Brother, like as as sh all shows do, when it started to die down, all the magazine deals and stuff, I just thought, OnlyFans, I'm just going to try it. So I did. And when I started it, I was very PG. Um, and I made loads of money. And I was like, why the fuck wouldn't I keep doing this? I carried on. And obviously, it's been like four or five years now that I've done it. So the levels have gone up and up and up because the money's addictive and people... 
want to see more. There's only so many times you can just pose covering your boobs and stuff. So, yeah, it's my biggest thing right now. But do you feel as if it has become an addiction? Because I've spoke to enough girls on OnlyFans yeah. now and I've spoke to enough porn stars who are now in their 30s and 40s. They seem damaged. They seem broke. Yeah. Is there ever a get out where you think, because you've kind of still got it together mm. and you're understanding life a bit more and you know when you were used back in the day. Yeah. Because you're still being used again, but you're getting what you want. You're getting what they want. Yeah. Men are fucking vulnerable. And men are so weak. Now, they are. It's, it's cringe. But yeah. they say one third than men are virgins. Mm. So men are just looking for a partner or somebody to talk to. Yeah. It's fucking it's terrible. It's fucking sad. Yeah. But you, are you wary of the longer you go, the more fucked up you will become? Absolutely. And that's why I've started. So I've just started a new thing where I'm um, building a software AI where I can be somebody's like virtual girlfriend on Telegram. Um, and it's like a basically like a robot where it mimics me completely. So you can literally voice note me. I have to do about 20 hours of voice training um, and sending loads of voice notes off to the software developers. Um, but yeah, you could literally voice note me and I can voice note you back, but it's not actually me. Um, and I can have 20,000 conversations at once or the software can, I don't have to do anything. So um, obviously I have to do a lot of work at the start and I'll keep content regular and stuff, but I'm hoping that I'm going to convert my OnlyFans to that. So OnlyFans for me is not a forever thing. And when my daughter's, you know, 12 years old, when she's got a phone, hopefully she doesn't have one before then, maybe she will. And things are easily accessible. I just don't want to be doing it. I just think with OnlyFans now, I think it's just more acceptable. Yeah, uh, The Americans definitely. and that, they're kind of 10, 20 years ahead where the oh, Americans love porn, OnlyFans, nothing but it's the girl next door now. Everybody seems to be doing it. Mm. And listen, men are paying for it. The yeah. thing is, when if I post a photo with somebody from OnlyFans or porn, it's the men, the hate, the fucking anger they've got. And really? I'm thinking, yeah, they're so what, angry. What, jealous of you? No, they get the girls. They're fucking, it's, it's madness what? how angry they are. Angry at what though? I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know why they're so angry, but it's the majority of them at pay or else people wouldn't do it. Yeah. But you know, a lot of guys pay to go on my OnlyFans and say horrible things. Don't, it doesn't bother me, but yeah, they'll just, money. yeah, they'll just say, oh, you, you look fucking gross or you look, da -da -da. I'm like, yeah, but you just paid to see that and you keep paying. So it's like they want to, they get a kick out of abusing you still. Yeah. Are you used to that though? Yeah. And that doesn't bother me anymore. You become I'd... thick skin to it. But then I've yeah. always been speaking about it recently. Look, look, they say sticks and stones, but names is just as bad as getting your fucking leg or arm broke because yeah. names are painful. They, they can kill people just as much as anything. Yeah. I think like emotional and mental abuse is worse than physical abuse. Well, actually, no, I can't say that because I've not really actually had real bad physical abuse, but it it can be. Like words, like you said, or manipulation. Yeah. can be a lot worse. What's, when did you start getting all the work done, the tits and the lips? Because you got your ass done as well, did you know? Yeah, yeah. So when did you start, when do you look at that and think, this is an addiction as well? When did you start working on all that? Oh, I'm still addicted to all of that. <laughs> 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 I'm always getting filler in my ass. Um, I got my boobs done when I was 20, I think. See, that's not too bad. Yeah. It's when the fillers on the ass, and then the cheeks and then yeah. I've seen men getting... Calf, but my face is not, yeah. And I think what? calf implants and bicep implants. I'm just no, mm. that's way too much. The abs and stuff, yeah, it looks crazy. weird for men. It's crazy, I think. Yeah, more women, it is. Listen, my mum and that get Botox and lips, so I'm not yeah. here to put them down, but it becomes an addictive thing as well. Yeah. Where people don't love themselves enough, where they're just craving yeah. something to, but if it makes people feel better, then I don't give a fuck. But I don't think people are happy enough. Because they're always craving more. If they were happy, then they I wouldn't get more. I think this comes along with social media, though, because the more you can see this image of this perfect woman that's probably not real, or like, you know, all the celebrities like Cardi B and all the American girls and that, it's like you almost feel like you have to keep up with them because they're just portraying this perfect look the whole time. And, yeah, I think, like, getting your lips done, it's, you know, people go and do it in their lunch break now. It's just normal. It's so normal to get your lips done. And, you know, it's when people take it to different levels like you can get filler here now because apparently if you've got a dip here it makes you look older and i'm like what would you mean i've got temples isn't that normal and they just keep adding these crazy things on and people get sucked into it but for me the face stuff i haven't got sucked into it yeah i get my lips done and i get botox but i don't get anything else i think the face stuff i used to though i used to have massive cheeks and yeah you don't even see what you're doing to yourself because when i got it took out 
and I was just free of it all for a few months. I looked back and I was like, that is not what I saw when I was doing it. So people just get, I don't know, you just kind of get sucked into it. I think it became um, like a shield as well though, like a little protection. Yeah. Of nobody can see who I really am. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what my tattoos are though. When too. did you start the tattoos? Um, I think I was, a, well, got my first ever tattoo when I was 13 in Singapore. Again, no ID needed. Um, it's shit. I've got a weed leaf on my ass because I used to be a stoner. And then it didn't really kind of stem from that tattoo, but I got the odd little one until I was about 18. And then that's when I started to get covered. Um, what about the tattoos in the face? Have you had some lasered off? No. So you've had, so what's that? Is that still there then? Yeah. The love that, heart? The right yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've got yeah, makeup yeah. ones. I don't know if you can fully see them, mm -hmm. but I've got some love hearts here. My daughter's date of birth and her name. Love written there. And a few more dotted around. But yeah, that's something that I can't stop. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do when I've got no space left. And that's coming soon. Cause... I think in time with the laser stuff, I think the next five years, we'll just be able to take stuff off and people Redo can just it. go again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so exactly. see, when you started OnlyFans, obviously you've done the glamour <clears throat> modelling, you've done the reality shows when you're doing mad shit mm -hmm. on there. Was the OnlyFans easy for you? Was that an easy decision? Um, no, yeah. I actually was in two minds about it. Um, I was seeing a guy at the time who didn't want me to do it but he was not bringing anything good to my life. So eventually that kind of got put aside. Um, and I started it and started to see the benefits from it and making loads of money. But it was definitely something I was thinking about for a while before I did it. Um, and although I can sit here now and say to you, like I'm happy and proud of everything I've accomplished and stuff, cause you know, I own properties and stuff. I put my money in good places. That something just doesn't sit right with me still, how I got the money, it just, it never will. Does it feel dirty? <clears throat> it feels, yeah. Why the fuck are you doing it then? Addicted. How do you change that then? Because obviously, you know yourself as a parent, we want to lead by example. It's all we want to do. We're talking yeah, a good I'd game. Be, I'd be completely destroyed if my daughter wanted to do it. I couldn't say she couldn't know, but I literally would be horrified if she wanted to. It's fucked, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a contradiction, isn't yeah. it? I, sometimes I talk and I think, you're on it today, James, and I listen <laughs> back and I think, you're just off your fucking head. Because it's just pure shite we talk. No, I know. It's just because we say it in a more calmer place. It's, it's bullshit. still bullshit. Yeah. But it's because bullshit. we're talking about life and this, but why am I down in London away from my kids? To create views, money, attention, yeah. things that I don't really give a fuck about. I wear holes in my jumper back home. I just walk the dogs. I've got fucking yeah. my dog bikes all holes in my. And I, I, I walk about like a fucking a jakey. But so why are you here? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know because the fact that just keeping busy yeah. it keeps my demons at bay. Yeah, they're not as loud. And you got still voices in brain. there, but they're not as loud as they used to be. Yeah, so I've got to keep busy. And when you when I settle, I think I need to be doing something. Everyone's got to be doing something though. You can't just, the, the family life is amazing, but I think if you do that 24 seven, like you just go insane. But the family life, it's hard. Mm. It's, it's okay making money and trying to give them, but it's fucking painful. Yeah. The constant worry, the constant stress, the constant, am I doing a good job? Or, because I get angry and agitated. So do I. I'm not a fucking monk and, and I get no. myself <laughs> down because I know I should be doing better. I'm always looking for improvements. But I think that shows that's a good quality to have. If you're always trying to be better, especially for your children, that must show that you're doing something right if you're always trying to do better. Yeah, but it's constant pressure then. I know. It's, I'm never happy. My life is going amazing. I'm drink-free, drug-free, gambling-free. I'm fucking smashing it. But up here, I'm eating, I'll eat my emotions. This is my third podcast today, so you kind of, I'll eat after it, and then it's like comforts like sitting eating myself. And yeah. It's fucking weird. I wish I had that issue. You've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I wanna, so. I'm trying to put weight on. Um... The weight that I've lost is just healthy weight, though, because I train a lot more now. No, um, lipo, lipo. Right? Oh, yeah, I had that but a while ago. That mm -hmm. went in my bum. So, yeah. So, they took, so, how does that work? So, they took all the fat out my stomach, my back, my arms, and then just shoved it in my ass. Not literally. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can't even just said that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, see, when you started the OnlyFans and it started PG... <clears throat> Yeah, and then you're getting that, you still getting that attention because you're in control. Mm -hmm. I've spoke to enough girls and they, they love that power. Mm -hmm. When I mean, you've got an army of men who basically fucking do anything for you, that is for me, for me, I don't. The power isn't really what drives me. It's just the money. Just like I can sit and talk to someone all day if they're spending, and 
I just, I don't know. Like it, for me, money, I've, I've, ne- I've never got enough. Like I want to have a mansion with 10 cars and 10 private jets and a fucking boat. Like that's where my brain wants to be. So no matter how good I do, if, if I'm not there, I'm not doing well enough. And, you know, there's been times where I've stopped and I've kind of looked around and I've seen what I've got and seen the house I live in and the houses that I own that other people rent. And I've thought, why don't I, why am I not like proud of myself? Or why am I not getting a feeling of like gratitude or like, yeah, being yeah. being proud of myself basically. And I think a lot of it's to do with how I've got the money, but a huge I amount. I don't even think it has to do with that because my money's clean now. I'm clean living. I'm not doing any dodgy shit. I'm flying yeah. straight. But I'm still feel the same. Yeah. I still feel the same, no matter the car, the jewellery or the house. It's just, there's still an emptiness. It's, I wouldn't say a loneliness feel... because it's, I've got enough people around me, but it's just, I don't know, because it's it doesn't mean fuck all. I think when you've been through so much, you're just trying to fill a hole constantly, maybe. And, yeah. and it almost makes me feel bad. Like, I've got the most beautiful, healthy daughter and she's the most important thing to me in the world. But sometimes I'm like, why am I not content with just that? But I'm not, and that's a fact. And it's like, but that's why I think that, you know, when you said you like to be busy and doing stuff, I think it's important to have the balance. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think, I don't know. I think I'm still searching. I think I think I still need a mum and a dad. I'm 35 years old, but I still need that. And I don't have it. And I just think I'm just trying to fill the hole with everything else and it, and it isn't working but i'm still doing it so. have you ever had that discussion with them now that you're a bit old and understand life more that they've let you down are yeah, they in denial in absolute denial my mum will not talk about it and she will not face it she blames me so when i have tried to speak to her about these things in the past she just tells me i'm aggressive so if i'm speaking and i'm being a bit um i don't even think aggressive the word i'm just telling you how I feel and I'm emotional so I might be sounding a bit angry or a bit upset oh you're just so aggressive Gemma I can't talk to you and that's it it's done you know there's loads of situations I remember another time when I was little sorry to go back to that but it's just come to my head where I was moving house um I say little I was 18 but yeah I I still feel little because I still feel like I'm craving that um motherly love but um I was moving house and I had to get some man in a van to come and help me move um, and I had not a lot of money back then, so I just chose the cheapest one. And the guy, was some Indian guy, and he came upstairs to the top of my house where I was collecting my bits, and he just took his shirt off, and he just grabbed me. And he kind of, I can't remember dead, dead specifically, but I just felt his breath like on my face, like he was dead close to me. And I just pushed him off and ran downstairs. And my friend luckily was downstairs, kicked them out, I think I might have reported it to the police. I can't remember. Um, but the first thing I wanted to do was ring my mum. And her fir- I told her exactly what happened. And her first thing she said was, well, what were you wearing? Because, yeah, you must have been wearing something basically, sl- I don't know the exact words she said, but something revealing for that to happen. And it was just like, again, that was another scenario that I felt like, oh shit, was I doing something wrong? I was wearing a tracksuit. I was moving house. But she obviously can see on Instagram that I'm going out on little skirts and stuff. So her initial reaction is to blame me. And yeah, I think I probably went on a bender that night. But yeah, th- these these things, I've brought that up to her since. And she just says she doesn't remember. So it's either I don't remember or you're aggressive. I can't talk to you. Does it make you feel as if you're going insane and actually making it up? But you actually do blame yourself? Um, I don't think it makes me feel like I'm making it up or blame myself, but it makes me feel like how I feel about it isn't valid. Like I don't have a right to feel like that or I shouldn't feel like that. And if I tell you I feel like that, the fact that you don't like it, I'm upsetting you and that's my fault. That's how it makes me feel. And you know you can still report that cunt when you were 14. Yeah. So you can. There's not, there's not a time limit There's not a, to say that because that's still trauma and mm. pain. Whatever relationship breaks down, every trust issues, every man comes into your life is fucked. Yeah, I I know I can. It's it's a weird feeling of like, it's almost like I feel like because I've got over it, I don't want to relive it by going through that type of process of reporting mm-hmm. it. Um, it's weird though because he's now forty five or something, and I heard that he married like an eighteen year old, and I think like I know that's not paedophilia, but it's not. It's fucking the, borderline. Yeah, that's thank yeah. you for saying that because I Philip think it Schofield is. Shit, that, yeah, 
you know, it's got Philip Schofield, he's just seen the kid at 10, so you're abusing your power. Yeah, exactly. So just because, listen, he could have waited and had sex at 16, but it's abusing the power, it's a man in power. Yeah. Who's then giving him a job, that's grooming. And it's a, it's the mental state of yeah. an 18-year-old. Like, how are you 45 and at 18, you're, you want to be with an 18-year-old who's got no life experience, no sexual experience? It's like manipulation. It's just, I think it's messed up. It's just grooming. Yeah. And if he's obviously got those tendencies, if he's done that with you, who else has he done it to? Exactly. But the most hurtful part, again, was just not being believed and not being listened to. And even, you know, I just remember my little sister was still friends with him um, a while after, actually. I think she got back friends with him. And I just felt like I had to be friends with him because... Protect your sister. Yeah, but also because otherwise I'd be the naughty girl again who was just always the problem. So... Yeah, but he's a sex case. Mm. He needs a fucking bullet right through the knee. And then beating fuck out is simple as that. There's no denying it. I believe in karma though as well. But so, look at Jimmy Savile. He went through his whole life with no convictions. Oh my God, yeah, true actually. And he was fucking shagging dead bodies and working in hospitals and working with disabled kids. There's... You know, stuff like that, I can't read too much of it because it makes me paranoid. Like what's out there. I know it's out there already and I'm so protective mm -hmm. and I'm aware. But when I read stuff like that, I'm like, what is this world coming to when... Pedophiles are just out here, but yet other crimes are way not as bad, but you get treated like way worse. Yeah, there was a kid that raped a 13 year old in Glasgow and never even got community service or got community service, but yet somebody, was, somebody was streaming football matches. You now you buy those dodgy boxes and, and get 12 years. Are you joking? Oh, 12 years, a poor bastard got. Oh this is what I'm saying, God. but they, they say the world is run by satanic fucking lunatics. Yeah, I agree with that, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Because they've got so much power and money, no object. They've Look at the meaning. Balenciaga campaign. Yeah. I, that d disgusted me. I got rid of all my stuff. I do notice people still wear it, and I do sometimes feel like, how? You're just allowing it. But the sick thing is, it's in front of your eyes. And we're so brainwashed and so dumbed down because we're so caught up in a world where it's all go, 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 get the bills, work hard, mm. put the kids to bed, then repeating the same cycle, 70 years old, and what, you've done fuck all your life. People think they're doing the right thing, life. Listen, yeah. there's a lot of beautiful things in life and there's a lot of amazing people. Yeah. I've met so many, but you just don't know what goes behind closed doors. So you've got to be protected. You've got to kind of just make sure, listen, I'm, you're not having a sleepover. My kid doesn't have sleepovers. No. I don't know what the fucking dad's like. I'm putting not, cameras no in way. rooms and shit. And I've interviewed enough fucking people now with the weird shit that does happen, I interviewed a woman, Sarah Sands, an amazing woman. She was an uh, old man at the shop, 77. Her kids used to go to the shop, lovely old man. And he gave the kids a job and abused the sons. But she went round that night and killed the cunt. <gasps> killed him. <laughs> so she did. She got seven years and then they doubled her sentence because it says it was too lenient. Beautiful. Really? Amazing Can they woman. do that? Go back and change it? Yeah. Because was a, the people reported that it was two really amazing women. I'd do that if I yeah, had to my I would kill not a fucking problem. Yeah. Not in a heartbeat. It's not act tough. It's Straight. Not, it's just, I would sleep better at night knowing that I've done damage to the person. Like, I love my kids. Well. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So we're kind of, everybody's got it in them. Mm. This is just a woman who done the right thing. She wanted the man to admit his guilt. But what happens is he got bail came back out again and abused more kids. So the system here is fucked. Uh, Della, Della Wright, fuck? who's trying to get... Because you can change your name for less than 20 quid, change your passport, change your driver license. That's how a lot of these people... High Why do they get them. protected like that? Australia, you can't leave the country. Russia, life sentence. Got it bang on. Here, they're just protected. Just kill the cunts. Yeah, I'm the same. Fuck them. I reckon death penalty for things like that. Yeah, I think they're going to try and castrate them. But the thing is, it doesn't change the mindset because it's a sexual attraction they say one in 30 has got paedophile tendencies so that's one in one in 30 one in 30 remember and the age the age consent in uk i think was 12 just at the late 1800s and they're trying to bring it down again to 14 and they're trying to normalize all the fucking weird shit with the, all the trans shit. movement and all the there's a they've done a cycle in london naked cycle yeah like, what the hell was that about it's just creepy you get done, I get fucking that 60 quid fine for doing a piss in the street three years ago. Well, exactly. All these cunts are walking about. Even if you're not doing a piss, you'll get done for being yeah. naked. But why are they allowed to be on bikes naked? Because <clears> they're trying to normalise it. If they normalise it and bring it into schools and have drag queens reading story times, it just, I've not got anything to do with it. I've not earned nothing to do against drag queen or whatever, but just keep it 18 plus, don't. That's what I think, yeah. about fairy suits and promoting it to kids and, and, and all confusing these pronouns them. and things like that. It's like bullshit. There's two genders, male and female. That's it. Men can't have babies. Men can't have periods. 
and it's just well it's just it seems mutilation if you're cutting yeah. off your tits and your dick and if you genuinely think yeah somebody else listen to that, i don't have a problem with you but don't bring it into schools and confuse yeah. kids minds because That's if you're it. at that age and lost and nobody's listening to you maybe you think oh maybe i'm trapped in somebody else's body exactly and before you know it, you're cutting things off it's just <clears throat> and you know there's people that have had these sex changes and then they've regretted it yeah. a few years later because it's not humane it's not a normal thing and it was classed as a mental illness four or five years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's, it is a mental illness. You're mentally fucking ill if you want to be. No. But saying that, you've had Botox and tits and arse and Yeah, but thing, I don't so, want to be a boy. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean? So I can understand. Like I say, I've no issues with anybody, but don't fucking teach my kids it. Because no. I speak out this shit frequently and people go off their nut. But I can only speak from a father the way I'm not got against it. But just because... In, the, in a society now where people's feelings are more protected than the truth... That's just bizarre. And it's just fucked up, man. Don't mm. tell me two and two is sex. It's, I mean, it's and also, up. if you want to sit there and tell me that you are a cat with fucking, I don't know, whatever, a dick when, you, when you're actually a, a girl sat there and I don't want to believe you, I can get in trouble for that now, apparently. Yeah, it's fucked up. If I don't want to address you like that. Yeah. It's like I keep seeing these things where um, the people of that kind of community are getting so offended when people who don't agree with it don't want to comply with how they want to be addressed and stuff. But... I don't want my daughter to learn that in school, but they are trying to bring that stuff into schools. I keep seeing it, but how can you stop it? It just seems it's a very small majority, but it's just to seem very loud. Mm. And if I'm in a, if my kid, daughter's going to the toilet and some hairy ass guy's going in, I ain't letting them in. Mm. Just because you then think... change your name or change your pronoun or whatever the fuck, you're still a man. Yeah, you? exactly. Just, and there is genuine people out there who genuinely think they're stuck in a different body and I get yeah. it. And they just want to be their self and don't be shouting from the rooftops. But there just seems to be a lot of madness with the pride, pride flags and pride yeah. ones. What's happened with the straight man? Yeah. What, fucking who celebrates us? We get a Father's Day, that's that. And then, yeah, we don't even really get fucking celebrated that much. No, exactly. Look, listen, a lot of men are assholes. We get it. I've been one for many years and I probably still am at some degree. But <laughs> it's just try to understand life and not just bending over because of what the fucking media are trying to promote. Yeah. Just have a front, have some fucking balls and say, do you know what? I'm not agreeing with that and I'm not agreeing with you because you say it's right. Everybody sees the world differently. Absolutely. It's actually scary though when, when I kind of see all these things on Reels on Instagram and how much people are just getting completely brainwashed and you can get brainwashed by good stuff but when when kids are like what 12 scrolling on tiktok and they're seeing this all the time yeah. it becomes more normal what's going on on their phone than what's going on at school or what's going on in the real world um but yeah that's something that's actually scares me but what about relationships what's your longest um four years why do you, <clears throat> do you struggle in relationships with insecurities you've had from the past um or you need to yeah I, I think, think the majority of women are. I think the majority of men are as well. I think men like me, the women. Yeah. Because I'm an elephant, I control, because all men are control freaks. I'm a control freak. Absolutely. So I'm like, in a relationship, I'm very um, submissive. So I, I kind of like to be what the man wants me to be. And I'm like a good girlfriend in terms of loyalty. And I, I stay at home. I don't, I'm not out in the club and stuff like that when I've got a boyfriend. Um, but in return, I do kind of want. Yeah, I guess I'm needy and, and I do want affection and love and stuff. And I think the men that I've gone for in the past can be quite emotionally unavailable and can't handle that sometimes. And um, yeah, I think the problem for me and the men that I get with is that I'm probably trying to fill a hole from what my parents didn't give me. So it's probably quite a big job for them to then do that. And, and I shouldn't really maybe expect them to, but I don't mean to. Like a father figure? Yeah, or just, you know, I, I have, I literally have no family around me at all. So I crave a lot of like the stuff what you get from your family, just comfort, love, loyalty, um, even just a shoulder to cry on or just someone to kind of talk to about stuff. So I feel like when I've had a boyfriend before, I kind of put a lot of weight on them, what a lot of people might go to their dad for or their mum for. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, and... Yeah, I, I have insecurities. I think we all do, especially in this day and age. Um, so yeah, I yeah, I do I do struggle, but I think it's because I get with the wrong type of boys. Do you think it's easier being single sometimes? <clears throat> Definitely, yes, emotionally. Um, because it is draining. Relationships are tiresome because 
as you get older, the more baggage as well. Yeah. So you're coming with fucking kids, you're coming with yeah. trauma, you're coming with pain, you're coming with... Just, Fix me. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're looking for somebody to heal the pain. And yeah. I used to always say, you can't love anybody until you love yourself, but I don't believe that anymore. I because, don't believe that. Yeah, because I think people can come in and, and make you a better person. Yeah. Because only thing with relationships, if you're single for so long, you can hide. Yeah. Nobody knows, nobody sees your madness. But then when you're in a relationship, it brings out all that unwanted fucking Absolutely, trauma yeah. that you suppress and you get those feelings, they can leave me. Mm. So as a man, all my relationships, I'd end it after three months because phew, my feelings are going, you can fucking hurt me. And I was already in pain. Yeah, exactly. Because as a man, a broken heart's the worst pain that you can go through. Losing a dog probably as well, but yeah. as a man, the, the pain of a heartbreak, because you'll see men going to the clubs and drinking ocean So do ocean you think beach. that it's worse for men than women? I, I think so, because we hide it more. But that doesn't mean it affection. feels worse. It does because you tend to see a lot of women speak about their pain. They'll sit around the girls and talk shit on Friday night with a pizza. Men are straight to the club, fucking other girls, going to Ocean straight Beach away. and doing all that yeah. because that's because they're broken. They can't handle the pain. Anybody normal will just go, fuck it, I'm going to train hard, I'll go to the gym. A lot of men do do that, yeah. but that is always an escape. I think both feel the pain because men love the attention, women love it, but when, it, when it's a toxic relationship though, they're the fucking worst. Yeah, when the both toxic are ones are the worst. Yeah, when you're... <laughs> yeah. That's the worst. But they're the, at, when it's... The love is there, though. It's the best. Yeah. But it doesn't last that long <laughs> because it just goes fucking nuts again. Exactly. And if you're both needy in different ways and you're not... The stubbornness as well is the worst. I'm so stubborn. How is it but when you get a man when you... The shit that you're doing now, though? So, with my boyfriend that I've got now, we do content together. So that's, uh, every, that's the best you tend to see every <clears throat> porn star that you kind of because they understand that life yeah a man would accept it for three months and yeah. then the insecurities and you're not doing that anymore yeah but every only fans girl I've spoke to choose the, the job over the man yeah well my I've had one boyfriend since I did OnlyFans because when I first started it I was with another guy and he didn't like it but I wasn't really doing it extreme then and it was alright it, 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 OnlyFans has never actually got in the way of me having a relationship before like my boyfriend that I'm with now, he wanted to be involved. So, what was he like before he met you? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? But when you say that he, you you got him involved, so he was he wasn't doing any of that shit. No, he never done it. He never done it before. He he knew I did it, so I think he always knew that there was a chance he could get involved. And um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just made me more money. So. <laughs> so when you started PG, what sort of shit you're doing on OnlyFans now? I fuck on OnlyFans. So, Everything? Yeah. yeah. Does that make the most money? Yeah. Do you see a lot of these guys gay for pay and that? I just don't get it. I can't get my head around that. Uh, around what? Gay for pay. A lot What's of the that? men sucking dick and getting their ass blasted. Oh my I God, just, no. I don't get it. Th then you're gay if you're doing that. A million percent. I had Dan on always mention the poor bastard. He's a good, he's a bare knuckle world champion. Yeah. Fucking nutcase. But he's sucking <laughs> dick and blasting the ass off guys. He's gay then. He's, he's bi gay. or whatever. But yeah, he... I don't, listen, nobody cares, but I just, yeah. But is the money so good that people just do it for the money? But why not just fuck women? But he says he makes more money if with he's, the gay side of things because yeah, men love it. If you're a man on OnlyFans, the audience is predominantly gay because women don't really go on there and spend money on there. So if it's like a woman's OnlyFans, but the obviously men are on there and you're like having sex with a guy who's not, it's not his OnlyFans, then it works that way around. But... For men to just have an OnlyFans on their own, unless they're with a girl who's like known on OnlyFans, it is going to be a gay audience, I would say. How many subscribers you got? Um, probably a hundred thousand collectively. What? Yeah. Are they okay? <laughs> Fucking good on you. I'm just start getting into OnlyFans. Maybe I'll just start getting asked you blasted off. Are yeah. <laughs> Kidding on, I'm putting everybody down. Ah, he's gay, but everybody yeah. shouts that's the one who's gay, and that. Yeah, exactly. So how the fuck do you maintain that then? With that, a lot of time consuming, a lot of content you need to make. Yeah, so this is the other thing. People think OnlyFans is so easy and you just start a page and then you just take some naked pictures and you become a millionaire. It doesn't work like that. Like I have to make new content every single day and I'm constantly answering messages all day long. Um, I do have a team of people that help me with the structure of my page and scheduling and stuff, but I speak to the fans myself, you know. Um, so it's a lot of work and... Can you imagine? I've been doing it five years. Like, there's only so many times I can do everything with whatever toy or whatever position. Like, I've done it all. So I'm constantly trying to find new ways to make new content. And it, it's fucking hard. Um, 
yeah, and, and I don't love doing it, if I'm honest. Is it just you and your boyfriend who does it, or is it, do you get other people involved? I do stuff with other girls, but I've never done anything with another guy, just him. So other girls I will meet up with and do collabs with. I actually do a collab day, which I started um, a few months ago. It's just called Collab with Gem Lucy. And people, other girls can come there to the day and collab with me, collab with each other. I don't really do really explicit with these girls. I'll do explicit stuff with like selected ones, but they can do um, kind of PG videos with me. And I provide five of the best photographers in England who come. And it's just a, a really great day for people to kind of start somewhere and build. So, yeah, but in terms of the explicit side, I can, yeah, I'll collab with other models that do well on OnlyFans and I do everything as well. How do you separate making love to having sex for OnlyFans? Is it just the same or, or do no, you separate both? It's completely different. How so? So when I first did it with my boyfriend, it was really weird because it's like it's acting. It's not like obviously when I have sex with my boyfriend, it's very intense and passionate and stuff. But when I'm filming, I don't do any of that stuff. Don't even really like to make much noise because I don't know. It, it feels weird. It took us a, a while to kind of get into that. But um, yeah, it, we don't mix the two. So we have a, t a set time where that's being filmed and then obviously the rest isn't a set time. That just happens whenever. How is it when you've got so many men? Because men are creepy. But when you've got so many men following you now, how do you then trust men when you know how fucking dark and seedy they are? I don't. Yeah, it's weird, doesn't it? I'm really, I struggle with trust. Like, I think that all men cheat. I think all men lie. I, I, I'm pretty fucked, I'll be honest. <laughs> like, there's nothing, that, there's nothing I trust. And if it hasn't happened yet, I think it will. I'm not just saying in my situation because that's separate but I'm just saying in, in any situation but I don't really trust people I get fucked over a lot I, I put a lot of love and trust into people because where my family is so non-existent I kind of make my friends or the people around me my family so I put my, my all into it and then I get you know I can get really upset with people if they either break my trust or, or, or let me down I take it quite quite badly in a way I wish I didn't I wish I didn't take it so personally but yeah, trust for me is the hardest thing to, to get in, in any friendship or a relationship. What sort of packages do you have in OnlyFans? In terms of How what? How does it work? What people would pay for your time and what's the price range? So you can subscribe. I usually have a, some sort of promotion on. So it's $20 to sub. Sometimes I'll have a promotion where it's 5 or 10 Um the idea is to just to get as many people on the page as possible. And then when I'm talking to them in the DMs, I'll just start talking a bit naughty and then send a little teaser video. And then from there, if they want to see more, then they just start unlocking and they're probably wanking at the same time. Well, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> these men, because they feel as if they're in a relationship with you, do they love you? Any stalkers? Any weird shit? Do you know what? Touch wood, I haven't really noticed a stalker. I mean, I might have, but I think I would know. Um, yeah, some of them are dead, kind of like loving and that you can tell they just want to be, they want to just talk to me. Sometimes none of them, sometimes they don't want to talk about anything sexual. They just want to talk about normal stuff. But then you get the proper dirty ones that just straight in. Like I had to do a FaceTime the other day and usually I, I answer the phone and they talk to me for about a minute or two and then that's usually it. Um, but this one, I just answered it and it was just wanking straight away. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> and he's not on the fucking thing. I was like, ah, get us off. If you've got so many, how can you balance it out if somebody's paying for your time? If somebody, so much is it for a FaceTime? Um, depends. Like two hundred dollars for like a minute and a half. What? Yeah. That's fuck. No, you're never stopping. No, well, no, I am. When you're I do this AI, AI when I do this AI thing, I'm stopping because this is the AI thing that I'm doing is so much more personal, and it's like on your phone, on your on your WhatsApp, basically, and. It's me voice noting you throughout the day. So like you could literally say, hi, Gemma, how are you? And I will reply saying, hi, James, I'm good. How are you? What are you doing today? And it's just like within seconds, the software's unreal. But the people just send you money all the time on OnlyFans, just if you're going out for the day, getting your nails done. Yeah, they do. I don't really ask for money for my nails, so because yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. <laughs> want the big dollars? I just want, I want the big dollars. Want yeah. Done, <laughs> yeah. <grand. laughs> so, see exactly, when you, yeah. how do you? Is there any boundaries with you? But it's a no go, or you just full steam ahead? 
In terms of what? Content. Yeah. I don't know. What do you mean? Just. I don't piss and stuff like that. Yeah, you get shite in that. that <laughs> no, that's fucking oh, maybe. weird. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that on yeah, No that, way. I've had the dominatrix and that on. She just shakes in a bowl and the guy's just sitting eating it at the door. Pardon? I had a dominatrix on Megara and she's just the crazy stories that men just eating it like a fucking bowl of cornflakes. Don't I'll be sick. Yeah. That's crazy. So she no. used to shake in the bowl. He used to pretend he was a dog or whatever and just sit and eat the shite and just talking to her like it's a cornflakes. I can feel something in my throat. Yeah. I, I don't hear it. <laughs> Like everybody's got fetishes. The feet fetish was we've been we've been talking about it least recently. We, mm. I, 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 who gives a fuck about that? Nobody oh, I do cares. Like that, yeah. a, like the pissing on people and that. I kind of there's nothing out of bounds anymore. Yeah, everybody's seen it all. I think people see what they, they see enough naked people in one day. And then yeah. with their whole lifetime or generation back. When your grandpa in like 1700s, 1800s, somebody see a set of tits yeah. from time to time. But nowadays, <laughs> there's so many so, there. She's just yeah. flooded. Do you think that can be damaging though? It's got to be because the porn, watching yeah. porn damaging towards the brain. So I'd imagine OnlyFans are just the exact same. Yeah, I think the whole, I can feel the damage that's kind of like within me from being involved in the industry and, and making the content and talking dirty to these guys and pretending I'm coming on this fucking video when I'm not. Like it, it feels so, it's fake. Do you know what I mean? And it's, yeah, it does feel really damaging. Um but yeah, I think porn in general for for guys, a lot of men get addicted to porn, don't they? Yeah. And I personally don't get it. Do you? No. I used I to watch it all the time, but I used to watch it back in the day. You're watching 10 minute free views at 12 o'clock at night, <laughs> at 12, 13. But then in your 20s, because it's a reward, it's like a reward system. Yeah. You're feeling good pl pleasure for a couple of minutes and then it goes. But yeah. the more you do it, the more depressed you become. Mm. Watching porn, it damages the brain, it darkens the medulla. Yeah. But it becomes depressing because then you're seeing people as objects. And I believe that's yeah, why exactly. so many men are creepy. Because yeah. that guy who you invited into your house, he's he's thinking that some fucking porn's set. Mm. So it's, men are seeing things differently yeah. the way we should. It's not it's relationships are breaking down too easy because it's so yeah, if you exactly. thought we're a blood fuck it. I'm just I'm just going put a post on fucking Instagram and say I'm single or some cheesy shit and people slide into your DMs. Absolutely. It, women are just they're up there with men and it's and it's just everywhere because it's like free now. Like yeah. even some people's Instagrams are so pornographic. It's just like a man can just see that and just get horny straight away and go straight to a porn site. I don't know. I just feel like e even like I've, I watch porn sometimes, not a lot, but when I do, obviously once it's done, I'm just like, oh, what was that? Feels that way. Yeah, just not interested. It's just like a weird feeling where I've done it occasionally and I've kind of felt like that afterwards where I just don't really can't see how someone gets addicted and wants to carry on doing that it's not like a doesn't stimulate you it doesn't make you feel good afterwards what sort of weird stuff do you get asked what sort of what weird stuff um oh i had a fucking weird one the other day <laughs> wait what was it <clears throat> oh my god it's not even dirty so someone paid me to do a video where i tied my hands up together and washed my hands with a bar of soap and they wanted to film me to film it so i was like how am I going to film this with my hand side? I did it, but he, what the fuck? Like, are you getting off on me washing my hands while they're tied up? Like that? I mean, that's not sex. Well, it is sexual, but it wasn't gross. Thank God. Um, yeah, I get asked for the pissing a lot. I, I don't do that. Pissing I did that what? once when I was off my nut. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't doing pissing it on what? Um, just pissing, pissing on a video. Camera. Yeah. How much do you get paid for that? I didn't do it. <laughs> is it the more is it the, the heavier stuff the more you get paid yeah but that's actually not allowed on any fans so what person yeah fucking amateur website isn't yeah it? no <laughs> shite bags <laughs> exactly so what's your daily routine like doing only fans um so when i wake up in the morning after you know my daughter's gone to school and stuff i'll usually i'll always take some pictures in the morning like in my bed or in the shower or um in the mirror and then I'll just have to kind of go through all my messages, respond to people, send out mass messages of like the porn that I've got, that I've made myself, um, and then make a schedule of what new stuff I need to make. And you must be of... one of the biggest money makers, huh? I don't think so. No, you must be in the UK. That's a lot, man. Maybe, but the American girls are on loads. Yeah, they're millions. I'm on fitness, some of them. 
Yeah. Is that the next step? What, millions? America. <sighs> you can only get so high in UK. Mm. America opens the door and are 360 million people. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've got a big American audience, though, because I do a lot of collaborating with... So there's a uh, really well-known porn star called Tucci Cash. I don't know if you know her. She's mm. super hot. She's a real cool girl, and she's really high up. So I've done some collaborating with her before, and when I did that, I got quite a lot of American subs. Um, and I collaborate in other ways, such as... You know, you can just share each other's posts on each other's page. So I do have a lot of American subs and the money's there, but I don't know. They just hit different over there. See, when you're like, taking your daughter to school and how do you feel when you know you're going back to do the mad shit? Do you try and block <laughs> it out? Because if you've got trauma in life, we're very good at blocking all this shit mm. out. But there comes a stage where it won't yeah. hurt you. And you're well, the thing Fuck is, like, the good, the good thing about OnlyFans is I am self-employed. So I do have weeks where I just shut off and I just I can't be fucked with that now for a few weeks. And it isn't good for my income, but my head's more important and my daughter's more important. And if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to. Like, what, if I really don't want to. What are you going to do when she does ask the questions? When she is in school and people are fucking showing the photos around my mum, passion on herself <laughs> there's no photo of that do you know what I mean though no, okay, yeah I mean, you'd have thought about that no doubt every fucking other day of course day. every day yeah how do, you, how do you handle that because you know how fucked up your upbringing was mm. and it's even though what your mum's put you through you doing what you do is probably more damaging I'm sorry to say but it is so you need to be careful because I yeah. know how much you love your daughter absolutely yeah I mean my aim is for it to not be around by the time she's at proper school and I want to get as much content as I can removed from all the leaked sites and stuff. I, I'm not going to be naive and sit here and say she's never going to know and never going to see it. Um, but I do often speak to girls that I know who have kids that are older. And I would say 80% of the girls that I know who've got older kids are fine with it. 20% no. Um, not to say that it's not See, I wouldn't no. believe that because as a mother and as a father... When I used to get mad with it in certain parties, I used to think, what the fuck am I doing? I've mm. got kids. My yeah. kids need me, but I never, I wasn't strong enough. I was weak. Just taking yeah. line after line after line because mm. I was so selfish. Yeah. And no matter what you're making or what, and I was doing bad things to make money. Plus I was gambling. I was doing fucking mad shit, but mm. it, I always knew what I was doing was wrong. But I blocked it out well with the weed and Valium and Charlie. And f yeah. But then you come sober. The thing about changing your life, everything hits you. You realise how, how you much you're a mess you're fucking up. Yeah. But in terms of a career like this, I don't know how to change it. That's the thing. Like, I'm trying to with the thing that I mentioned earlier with the AI, but I don't know how. I, I, like, I couldn't just go, all right, I, I can't do any fans anymore because when my daughter's older, it's going to be whatever because... It's my income. Yeah, you're never. I, I already see we're talking to you. You're never going to stop it anytime soon, because like you say, you're addicted to the money. The money heals your pain, but there will come a stage where it doesn't matter how much money you make. You're probably already feeling it. Doesn't mean fuck all. Yeah, it's your daughter's sanity, because you know yourself. The photos, no matter how much you try and block it out. But again, I genuinely do think within the next. I don't even think it will matter. Yeah, only fans and all. Think... You're probably hoping that anyway. But I genuinely do think, who's asked? I think that. In 10 years time, it's just becoming so much more normal. Yeah. Like I've even got friends ringing me up, asking me, can you help me get on? I want to get on it. Girls that I never thought would do it. <laughs> you know, one of my friends, she's almost 50 and she's got two kids and she wants to do it. And I'm just like, everyone is just jumping on, Yeah. you know? So I think it's just going to become a lot more normal, but that doesn't mean I still, even when it becomes that, I still want to get off it because of how it makes me feel. How do you get off it? I have to build other businesses that have an income that's kind of matches that or covers my expenses and a bit more at least and well, you don't even know how long it lasted did, they, did it not crash last year or they changed the fucking yeah they tried to say they were not allowing adult content on there anymore and i think everyone got pissed off when they changed that but yeah that scared me yeah they're making too much money man they must mm -hmm. be making trillions billions literally yeah do you know what i mean so yeah yeah do you, is that your main concern the damage because you're only you're doing it in the comfort of your own home, so yeah. you are protected. So I'd imagine that bit's yeah. boxed off. With you. You're in control. Yeah, exactly. Not working for anybody. You're not being violated. Yeah, because I used to be a stripper, and you know when you're when you're using your body to sell in front of people, where it's literally like the person's there, it feels 
it feels different. Like when I'm at home, I can just go on my phone, log on, do what I need to do. And then if I feel shit or whatever, I don't want to do it, I just put my phone away. But when I used to strip, you can't do that. You ha you're there and you have to make the money. So yeah, I've, I've thought about all kinds of things. I actually, I was a stripper from age like 21 to 26, something like that. And I actually went back to it last year or the year before, because I thought now I've been on TV, I'm going to make loads of money, which I did. I went back, smashed it. Um, but it just didn't feel right. Like selling myself in person to someone, it felt different to doing it on the internet, even though it's the same. I can still switch off from it. And like you said, I'm at home. I'm in the comfort yeah. of my own home. I feel safe to a certain extent there. So the thing about yourself, Gemma, you are a good soul. You're a good cunt, man. You're, you're good energy. You have. You've always been a good cunt. You've always been scatty. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but who's not? Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I was just scatty. How do you one. feel as if your life would be if you had that father, that role model to protect you and to guide you? How do you think your life would be? Do you hold any regret towards your father with that as well? Um, My life would be completely different if I had parents that gave a fuck. Let's be real. Because they didn't. And... I didn't know what the fuck I was doing from age, any age, but especially from when I was in England on my own, I didn't know what to do. I was just doing what I thought was the right way to get love or get attention or make money. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, I, I, I kind of resent them in the sense of like, what the fuck were you doing having a kid when you don't even want to look after them? But they don't even see what they did wrong. So I can't even have a conversation about it. And my dad's actually... My mum is horrible, but my dad's actually a nice person. He's just completely emotionally unavailable and doesn't understand anything about what he's done to me and what I've been through. Um, but my mum's just a horrible bitch. So, <laughs> when was the last time you cried? Oh, the other day. <laughs> Do you cry a lot? Um, I'll go through ph like phases. Yeah. I cry... A lot of the time when I cry, it's, believe it or not, I feel guilty about certain things. Like with my daughter, it's always just silly little things. Like, I just find her so cute and stuff. And, you know, if she, like when you said you get frustrated, I get so frustrated with her. And if I shout at her or, I always cry about stuff like that because I feel like, why can't I just manage my emotion better and not shout at her? But then the other part of me is saying, no, you need to like discipline your child. But... Yeah, I cry a lot around stuff like that. But no doubt you're an amazing mum, but there has got to come a stage where you think, you've got to think about your daughter. You've mm. not got to be selfish because it is still a selfish mode you're in. Mm, I don't yeah. want to fucking try and bring you down. I can only speak for what I see. Yeah. And you're not daft, you fucking know this. So it's just difficult when you're in that little game. Mm. You're fucking smashing it. You're killing it, basically. But it don't mean fuck all. But I want to provide things for her, like, you know... Uh, financial security and stuff i want her to never ever like miss out on anything but what's that one thing you would have took from your mum and dad what do you mean what's the one thing you wanted from your mum and dad love and attention there you go that's free i'd Don't... definitely give her that but obviously the only fan stuff yeah i just don't know how that's gonna affect her yeah i mean the 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 thing is like all the stuff that I've been through I'm so aware of it all the time because when I'm looking at my daughter even today when she had a tantrum I was just like I need to just I just want her to know that I'm still care about her even if I can't fully attend to her right this second or if I can't fix whatever's wrong with her which was nothing but as long as I'm just there and, and prepared to listen to her and stuff I just feel like that's got to be where it kind of starts um in terms of her feeling comfortable and safe that's something i've never felt never felt safe never felt like i can trust anything where i am who i'm with family nothing i've always felt lied to um led astray so yeah if i can provide a safe home for her that's the main thing yeah that's all you can do and it's not listen i've not got any problems about people doing only fans and porn i've got friends in every fucking industry yeah. friends with murderers and bank robbers porn stars only i've no issues with it but Sometimes I just see sadness in it because I'm trying to fly straight, but I'm still sad. I still get sad. I'll yeah. go home on the journey tomorrow and I'll feel down. And I think, what the fuck are you down for? It's like a depressant sometimes. Yeah. But people see you and it's a big smiles, it's a handshakes, it's a cuddles, and mm. he's a great guy. But then I walk away and I think, I just can't be fucked talking to you. I'm like that, but how do you fix that? How do we fix that, do you think? What do you think's missing? 
I think it, I'll be honest with you, in my last, in my latest years, I just think I'm fucked and that's just it. <laughs> I'm not joking. I just think I've had so much therapy. I've been around all different kinds of people. I just have to learn to live with the person I am. And I'm never fully happy. I'm never fully content. I always want more of this. I'm always doubting myself in that, being a parent, everything. And I don't know. I just, just got to live with it. Damn, he's done it. Yeah, what can we actually do about yeah, it? But it's, listen, it's not just us. Mm. The thing with these conversations, you're just, we're just kind of putting it on the line. Listen, we're fucked. We contradict ourselves. We're happy one minute, we're sad yeah. the next. We want money, we want attention, we get it. We're still not yeah. happy. We it's... want to be good parents, but we still do things wrong. Yeah. If I don't love my kids that much, why do I travel so much? Yeah. They need me. I do, and what I do is convince myself I'm giving them good schools, I'm giving them this. That's I'm giving what I them do. That, and it's just, and I don't know if I'm trying to convince myself because as a father, man, you've got to keep busy. I've got to keep busy. I believe it is a mother's role to be with the kids more skin to skin and yeah. understanding kids. I don't mm. think kids should be in nurseries all the time. That's just my own opinion. Yeah, because I don't, somebody yeah. else raising their kids. And the thing is, kids listen to their teachers and their friends more than they do their parents. So your kids' lives are kind of controlled by who they're surrounded with yeah, at exactly. a very young age. And I don't know, listen, we don't have it all figured out. The money does help, I'm not going to lie. I, we've got some freedom. We're staying in nice places. We travel all around. And, Absolutely, and, and, yeah. And interview some amazing people, and people get a lot of inspiration from these conversations. But I think the important thing to remember, what I always tell myself, is that just because you've got kids doesn't mean you're not your own person still. So this is something I always try and tell myself because I still have like needs and um, just things that I like to do and and things that might not always involve my daughter, and I do feel guilty, but. I just like always tell myself like I'm still me. I still have my own issues and like I said, needs that I want to fulfill um, in my life. That they don't just go away just because you become a parent. And but some people they do, I guess, because I, I there are some people that are literally just parent mode twenty four seven. I don't know how people do that though, mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily think that that's normal. And I think maybe that's some sort of coping mechanism for something. Maybe. Um, but I think it's also important that children do kind of grow up knowing that parents have to work and parents aren't always with you 24-7, but if you need them, they're literally a phone call away or five minutes away kind of thing. So um, that's what I tell myself anyway. Would you have any more kids? Yeah. I do want to have another child. Um, I don't know when yet, but definitely within the next like, two to three years. What about when you go to school and stuff? Do you, do you feel as if the parents look at you and because they know what you're yeah. Absolutely. I don't think they know what I do. They don't know what fuck's sake. They don't. They fucking <laughs> know. Of course they'll know. Half the kids will be subscribing. Do you reckon? Yeah, well, you percent. <laughs> everybody knows everybody. I know. I always check it. I always need to know who the parents are my daughter's hanging around mm. with. I need to know. Who the fuck are they? What do they do? Oh, shit. Maybe that's why they're weird with me then. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> say they were weird with you. But like I say, you're not, it's not as if you're not... You, you can't chat with you and you're not, mm. you're, you're, like I say, you're not a bad person. I always think it's more how I look that's an issue. You think the or, tattoos can yeah, scare people? I think so, especially where, you know, the area that I live in, it's not... It's a posh. Yeah, so it's not... Do you feel like, a, not an oddity, but do you feel like different? Outsider, yeah. It's mad that, isn't it? Yeah. But you're making money than the rest of those slags. So yeah, fuck them. I know. I know. You look down at the, the posh wankers. <laughs> this is what I mean. Right? This is what I mean. But do I you just... think that's imposter syndrome? Well, uh, no matter what we do or how much money there's always going to be, we're not good enough. Definitely. And I think that I was in a really posh boarding school when I was younger, all of the schools I went to. And I just found the people that are brought up with these kind of like, what's it called? Spoon fed? Is that silver yeah, silver spoon. spoon. Yeah. That you just fake all the time and you just, yeah, not real and pretend to like each other. And it's all a very kind of like surface level relationship you have with other people where you just pretend to be nice all the time. And that's kind of why it was an issue when I mentioned about that guy feeling me up when I was 14. That mess of all of that when people just have to have this surface kind of niceness no matter what's going on. And I feel like that happens a lot around where I live. Um, and it just reminds me of that, like when I was younger. So I feel odd because of that too, because my mindset isn't like that. If I don't like you, that, then I don't, I'm not going to pretend I like yeah. you. I'm not going to be horrible. But um, but yeah, I definitely feel the way I look though when I go to pick my daughter up from school. Like nobody looks at me like that, like this there. So I don't know. Like, do people see past it? Like my mum has always had an issue with how I look. She hates it. My tattoos, everything. She sent me an email once years ago that she was meant to send her friends. She copied about 10 of her friends in. 
she screenshot all my tattoos on from my Instagram, slagged me off, but f- accidentally put me in it as well. And then when I was like, well, I replied saying it was horrible. And she was like, well, I'll be honest with you, Gemma, you are um, segregating yourself. Is that the word? Your mum sounds like an evil bastard, man. Yeah. She's probably not meant to. She's probably meant to put you in. Mm. Is, he, is he definitely your parents? <laughs> Are they definitely my parents? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> they could be adopted or something. Yeah, because maybe. Because who treats their daughter like that? I know. That's but when up. I meet people that are sort of posh, I, it just makes me think that they're going to see me how she does. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I get really you need to anxious. You start thinking that way because no matter what you've done, listen, you've still went out and provided for yourself. You've survived. Mm. You're still here. Listen, yeah. you might not be making the, the, the legit money that you, you believe you could be making. You're very, you're successful. You know how to make money. Mm. You can utilize that brain and making money where you feel, do you know what? I'm, you've got a proper driving purpose. Right now, you said you feel it's a bit dirty, and, but you're doing what you can. You're surviving. You've mm. not had the father figure to say, look what you're fucking doing. It's yeah. all the usual suspects for the father not being there, stripping, yeah. escorting, porn, fucking OnlyFans, tattoos. Everything just hiding from something. Yeah, amiss. covering it's, up it's the body, the pain. suspects, but it's not. Some of the girls I used to get back in the day were fucking nuts, but they were so loyal to me. Yeah. They were fucking 100%. They would die for me. That's and what I I'm loved like. That. Yeah. They were fucking psychos. They would smash up my gaff and they were loon balls. <laughs> but there was something I attracted to that because I loved that. Mm. I loved the madness and chaos. And then when you start changing, your life doesn't become boring. It's more at peace. But even then, when my life's at peace, I feel as if I should be causing some sort of yeah. mayhem because I'm used to my life being so noisy. That's it, exactly. I get that too. Like I'm still, I'm not as wild as I used to be like that, but I am like that. I'm crazy, but so loyal. And I mean, I'd probably rather be that way than not loyal and not crazy, if I'm honest yeah. with you. Because loyalty is just the one thing that, it's so rare nowadays. Gets you burned as well if you're mm, too loyal. Absolutely. But when are you at your happiest? Um, it's a really tough question, you know. I don't ever feel 100% happy, ever. So it's more when I'm at my least saddest, I would say. And I think it's just definitely around my daughter and her happiness and... Yeah, but it, I feel guilty. I just don't ever feel fully content. Yeah, I'm the same. Listen, we should, that should be the answer what happens when we're mm. for kids, but that's bullshit. Mm. Sometimes I'm the most fucking stressed and, and, yeah, exactly. and upset because I just think that's natural for a parent. Yeah, and that whole love yourself thing, I don't really get that because everybody you know on this planet wants to be with someone else because that's what makes people happy. And I don't love myself, so what now? So what yeah. does that? Where, where do I go from there? So yeah, I guess I'm my happiest when I'm happy with my partner and my daughter is happy. But then I always feel like if that goes away, it's almost like I'm depending on that to make me happy. Yeah, but that's okay as well. I was not using them, but to be dependent on other people for happiness mm. because we don't know how to be truly happy with ourselves. Yeah. I don't think anybody does. People think they've got it figured out, but no. are they really honest about it? I've never came across... You see people in a... They're too fucking happy, and I think, nah, you're, just, you're just fucking, acting. you're, 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 <laughs> you're about to talk yeah. yourself, chill out. When are you, when's your darkest days? When do they, they come? Oh, my darkest days are, that's a tough question too. I guess, actually, I'll be honest, if my money starts to go down, this is when I get real depressed. Because OnlyFans is something that goes up and down depending on, everything it can depend on the recession or the time of year or even the week before paydays shit you know or i don't know everyone's making their content three dollars and mine's 20 so then do you know what i mean it changes all the time it's so up and down it's not consistent so you can make 200 grand one month and make 10 grand the next month it's like that's a huge jump um so yeah when i go when i have a dip in earnings which is still a lot more than a lot of people, it makes me so depressed. Yeah, but you're becoming relying on that. It's like a fruit machine now. Yeah. So I was just pulling the lever. I, exactly. Everything that I've wanted in my life, I'm achieving, but I don't even fucking, I don't even it's enjoy or embrace it. It's I remember we used to, me and Stephen used to drive and because we never had the money to stay in hotels, we used to sometimes in the car, we're just winging it, trying to do as many interviews in a day because we're yeah. going to get fuel home and then it becomes easier. I miss that grind sometimes. I'm still yeah. hustling, but there's, there's, there's some spin. When the you, more when money you, you when make, you... the more pressure you yeah. have on yourself as well. And yeah. your lifestyle just, you just have more things to pay for and more, 
extravagant lifestyle, it kind of just makes it more depressing because of the pressure, I would say. Where do you go forward for the future? In what sense? Just plans. Okay, so future plans are, believe it or not, I do want to get off OnlyFans within the next five to ten years. Hopefully five. <laughs> okay, I thought you were going to say two to three years. No. You just gave yourself a 10 stretch. That means 20 years. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't know if only fans are about, about that long. People will get bored of it. Yeah, they will. Over the next three, four years, there'll be something else coming in. There'll be fucking robots and that. There'll be yeah. mad shit. The, the AI stuff's all going to come yeah. in. But yeah, so, and I want to build, I'm building a property portfolio. Um, I buy and sell no, don't sell, sorry. I buy properties and I rent them out, um, but I buy them off plan at the minute. But my um, plan is to buy them and either build them from scratch or buy derelict ones and build them up. And yeah, keep busy doing that and hopefully build a business that my daughter can then be involved in when she's older. I just want to make my daughter financially secure. And I know she might grow up and not care about money, but money does make the world go around and money doesn't buy happiness, but it buys freedom. For sure. Yeah, of course, man. We need it to survive. It's an energy currency. Yeah. It's how we, but like I say, you've got the business mindset. You're not daft. You're learning. Mm. You're growing. Where it's a case of, you, you still might be having all the property, multi million pound properties, but you still mm. might only fans because it gives you a sense of an escape. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the scary thing. It doesn't matter how much money you make or how many properties you have. It's to jump off that Ferris wheel and make the changes. That's why people struggle to change because they're so caught yeah. up in that lifestyle. So people are in abusive relationships. They can't leave because they're used to it. That's exactly it. When you're used to being like traumatized by someone, you kind of feel, although you know you're getting treated badly, you kind of feel comfortable in that because it's what you're used to. Yeah. It's scary. I've been in that. Yeah, you're, but like I say, you've been going through that since you were a kid. Mm. Abandonment issues, bullying, mm. being fucking groped, mm. stripping, OnlyFans, on TVs, tattoos. All the, it's just a constant wheel of yeah. never feeling good enough. But there'll come a stage when you go, do you know what? I'm going to really fucking work at this. Because you're mm. not daft. You know, deep inside, you see you getting emotional when you talk about your daughter. Yeah. So it's clearly, you know the answers. It's just hard to actually follow through with them because you were so used to that yeah that lifestyle if i could jump off only fans and jump into something else and make the same amount of money i would do it without question but you could and the thing is remember it's not all about the money but we crave it so much because we feel as if that's what makes us better but it is about the money because of my lifestyle but you were probably happier when you were skint at times as well oh yeah i was well happier when i was skint i didn't have a child to pay for though yeah it is an excuse thing, though, definitely. Like, of course it you is. know, it's it's really tough when you actually like think about it and go deep into your brain about it because I, I do hate it and I don't want my daughter to see it, but yeah, I'm still doing it. <laughs> that was the same with me. I used to say I was coming off the weed, and then before you know it, 10 o'clock came and I was smoking a joint before bed. So, <laughs> and you just feel like a fucking waster. Mm. No matter what it is, it's always an addiction. Yeah. addiction to pain addiction to misery I don't know what the fuck it is I, I, I genuinely don't yeah. have the answers to it yeah. I can only speak from my own life experiences and I interview enough people to realise mm. nobody knows what the Who's fuck going on everything yeah. coke, Eki's Valium it was kind of balanced it all out so coke was more at the weekends mm. and then it was I gambled with everything so I was gambling every day the coke was to give me the confidence as if I never had a care in the world yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday Thursday it was in smoking joints so then it was a couple of Valium just yeah. to balance the pain Mm -hmm. And it was straight back on the hustle again. It's just, it's just. Do you think weird. you're affected now mentally? I think it has scarred us. Yeah. Because I'm all over the gap sometimes. People That's always say like. you're doing well and you're smashing it, and I'll say this all the time. But I genuinely walk away and think, mm -hmm. "Fool you, you can't," because they just don't know. I here. had a much better time when I was getting fucked than. It's easier. Yeah. It's easier being a loser. It's easier being a waster. Mm. It's easier doing that stuff because you've no responsibilities. Absolutely, when you become yeah. clearer and the mind becomes clearer, the responsibilities become even yeah. a greater responsibility because you know there's pressure of your kids looking up to you for support not just mentally physically mm. spiritually financially there's just so many different things that we need to but that's a good thing because the kids are our future absolutely but i just yeah. i'm worried because i think the fucking place is a mess what's getting taught at schools and everything just seems backwards i don't know what we can do about it though exactly for anybody watching Gemma, it's maybe going through a life of struggle you've been there yourself mm-hmm Still fucking struggling, not <laughs> you've got through it. Listen, you're making money and you're you're doing what you can with you, with the tools that you've got to to succeed. But for anybody that's in the struggling now, what advice would you have for them? 
in terms of drugs. Anything. Just struggling. I mean... Shite your parents. Just drugs, whatever. It's hard because although my struggles have changed and the way I handle it has changed, I'm still in it myself. So I guess the best advice I can give someone is to never give up. Um, surround yourself with pe only people that you fully trust that make you happy. Don't trust new people. <laughs> and you just got to keep going. I mean, that's that's the best advice I can give because that's what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not fixed from what I've been through. I'm just dealing with it different by burying my head into making money, um, doing my OnlyFans. But it's just my addiction's changed. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and I get addicted to men. Like, so if I'm seeing someone, that, that's like my main Obsession. focus. Yeah, I get really addicted to them and in, in a good way as well as a, can be a bit toxic. Um, I used to be worse at that though. And I used to put up with shit that I don't put up with anymore. But if it's a drugs thing, I think you just, it's a time thing. Some people never see the light at the end. How much gear were you taking? I was sniffing a lot of gear. I would I would sniff from Friday till Monday, no sleep. Yeah, I think that, but I think that's just a natural mm. for anybody that's kind of fucked up in the head. Yeah, and I used to love it because I would be on gear with other people on gear, you're and you're fucked up. yeah, and you Having love each laugh, other. Yeah. yeah, because you're a lost soul, just all exactly. talking pure shit. Exactly. And I was like, and I'd do crazy yeah. things. And I used to think I was so funny and wild, and I ended up sniffing fucking pro, not not pro plus. What's it called? pre-workout once and we ran out of gear and we were just sniffing these huge lines yeah. of this pink powder and it was just fun and I wasn't getting fucked off it but yeah and I have memories when I look back and I think I actually had fun when I was doing that but what I was doing is fucked up yeah you know so yeah I was sniffing loads for days um coming down like you said Valium Xanax all of that mm. um that's a roller coaster of emotions and I've never laughed as much as I did in my 20s Mm. But that's when I was at my most lost. I don't know if that's the acting of a clown, but yeah. I did genuinely laugh because it was fucked up. Because you just didn't give a fuck yeah, as well. it was well. so fucked up. It was so deranged. It's dysfunctional, the mm. shit that we used to do and sitting. But I never left. I mean, I used to get upset when people were leaving. Abandonment used to kick in. I never this left. This is what I said never the other left. day. And I just did get sad. And then I just wanted Thursday to come again or Friday. I used to lock used people to in again. my house so they couldn't it's leave. It's fucking psychotic mm. behavior. I literally was saying this the other day because I was the worst one on the sesh because I would literally not let anyone leave. And I would, yeah. if someone was like, I'm going home to bed, I'm like, oh, no, you can't leave. And I was always, I was always, I, I wouldn't just cunch jaws all over the place. I was always in control. Mm. I put the lines out, I'd have the music on. I was fucking up. The down. balloons. Yeah, the I balloons. was just everywhere. So, but I, I, my engine would go f so long. Mm, me too. And then I would fucking crash. Everybody crash. would leave. People would leave at six in the morning first night. I was three nights deep. Yeah. And I was still fucking at my tits. <laughs> Do you I know, know what I mean? So it's, it's, it is scary, but I, hopefully I have learned. I don't think I've got another recovery in me. If I did go back, I hope to touch wood, I won't go back. Yeah. But I don't think, because I've it's too, it's too painful. It's yeah. too hard. The f feeling like a failure and a loser would just be too much. Yeah, And then absolutely. I feel as if everything I try and promote would just be a fraud because I already feel like a fraud anyway. So do I. Yeah, so it's it's fucked up. But how do you feel just kind of going over your story today? I feel good. I feel like it's good to kind of get my story out there a little bit because I think that a lot of people think I'm just this crazy drunk girl on the telly. But actually, I've been through so much and there's a reason for all of my madness. madness. Yeah. yeah. Um, And I hope people can see that I'm actually just trying to I'm trying to be a good mum. A lot of people will say that I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that, but we're all trying. No one's, there's no like written handbook of how you should and shouldn't be a parent. Yeah. And every parent, every child's different. So, yeah. and it's not just because you're doing OnlyFans, it doesn't mean your daughter's going to be bad. No. You raised the parents had a bit of money and look the way it turned out. Yeah. So, it does not mean fuck all. No. But again, people will judge it and you can understand why they'll judge it. Mm. You know why you judge yourself. So, I do, exactly. <clears throat> but nobody's got any right place to have their opinions on anybody else's life because nobody's got it 100% figured out. I no, just hope exactly. you have the best future. I genuinely hope you, you get all your dreams and. Hopefully our demons do surpass. Yeah. I don't think they have. I think we just learn to dance with the fuckers, innit? That's what I mean. Do you know what I mean? But just carry what on. about therapy and stuff? Are you done with that? Are you going to dip your toe back into it? No, I still, I always, I still have it every week. Um, my think therapist... that can be damaging though, just going over the same shit? Um, or you just do that because you've not got anybody to talk to? I was just going to say, like, my therapist, 
she's got a very sort of motherly energy. Loving vibe. Yeah. So I just like to talk to her. Yeah. I don't even know if she knows that I feel like this, but I just like to talk to her because I don't really talk to her about all what I've told you about today. Of course I have done, but when I see her every week, it's usually what's happened in the week. If something's happened or I feel shit about something, I'll tell her like as we go along, like I would a friend. And I really like her. So I'm going to continue doing that. I was having a bit of hypnotherapy. Um, I kind of stopped doing that because I've got real bad anxiety about traveling because of what happened to me in the airport. So some years it's worse than others. Like I've definitely traveled since it happened, but especially since I've had my daughter, I just get this vision that I'm going to get ripped away from her as soon as I get off a plane. Mm -hmm. And this happened to me 20 years ago. And I still, to this day, feel like I'm going to get ripped away from her. Yeah. Um, so I I want to have therapy to fix that, but I've had so much therapy to fix it and it doesn't go anywhere. It's stuck in me. Yeah. It's just all programming. Mm. The mind's a mad power. It's a powerful fucking thing. Yeah. And it's difficult to break away the chain and, and break the connection and try and rewire the brain. But if it's there, it's just a case of living with it and trying to push him through. Absolutely. Yeah. It's fuck all we can do, but would you like to finish up on anything, Jack? No, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me today. It's Listen, been really good. Thanks for coming on. I thoroughly enjoyed that. But mm -hmm, like I say, too. it shows a different side of you. And I genuinely believe you are a good soul. Yeah. You're lost like most of us. Yeah. I'm not here to judge her, but I'm just as fucked up as you are. Yeah. Sometimes we just hide We'll just be it, fucked yeah, up together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but I genuinely wish you all the best for the future. For people who's maybe watch subscribe to your OnlyFans, yeah. social media is what's all the links they can go to. Okay, so my OnlyFans is at generally CVIP. So it's onlyfans.com at generally... Uh, forward slash generally cvip my instagram has just got took but i'm hopefully getting it back it's at generally c underscore official but if it doesn't come back my new one is at generally c new Gemma, underscore new Gemma, so, listen for coming on today very yeah. great for telling your story i wish you thank nothing you. but the best for the future god bless you sending love thank you